All right, guys, welcome back to the shop again. Let's see if we can't do a quick, simple, easy RV repair, you know, like we used to do. So this 2017 uh, Puma travel trailer has a Dometic power awning on it, but it's not a Weather Pro awning, it's just a simple power awning. So these power awnings from Dometic are a little bit different than the Carefree ones. Yeah, they still have a motor at the front right there, but they do have a torsion spring on the rear arm to help it roll back up again. It may not look like it, but it's broken on the back. The owner of this travel trailer clipped the end of his awning on something as they were driving. Yeah, it damaged the fabric a little bit, but he's not too concerned about that. What he's concerned about is the tube got smashed a little bit, and then uh, the end cap and the torsion on this side, it doesn't exist because it broke off. Right here, I have the new torsion spring for it. It is fairly similar to like maybe a garage door spring. You can see it coiled up in there. Very similar to what you would find on a manual awning. Like this manual Dometic on the Zephyr right here. So there's no motor, but there's a torsion on that side and a torsion on the back side. Now this is not a locking spring. So this can be quite the dangerous job, just like doing garage springs. It may not be able to see on my hands, but there's a lot of scarring on my hand from uh, uh, awning spring damaging my hand pretty good. So if you don't know what you're doing on an awning, I would not recommend doing a torsion spring by yourself. Uh, that's my recommendation. So the first thing we have to do is extend this awning out, out maybe about a foot so that we have some space to work with. The motor on this side will act as a brake to keep uh, the awning from moving at all because it does have a brake built into it. But the arms have built in gas struts that want to extend these arms out too. So we don't want to take it apart until we're prepped and safe and ready to go. So let's just go ahead and extend this out a little bit. Awning extend. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that bind up a little bit, but it's not going to extend any more than this now. Now I didn't completely explain the anatomy of this spring. This torsion cap is missing because it's cast aluminum. So hopefully you can see the casting in there. So once it breaks, it's brittle, just like China and fall apart. Uh, it has a steel rod going through the middle of it, which you can see right there. This part will lock onto the profile inside the tube there. So when that engages the tube, it'll lock it into place. And as we twist this end, it'll add tension to the spring. All right, let me free that up a little bit. We need a little bit more slack than this because we have to lift the tube up out of this arm there. So we need to have enough uh, slack on the fabric to do that. That should be more than enough. And so now you can see that gas strut right here and the other one right here. So this wants to extend that arm out pretty quickly. You can get hurt in the face with that. I did do that to my friend once. So you don't want to take anything apart yet until you get the arm strapped down. Now the front one, we don't really have to worry about because it's attached to the motor. So it's not going to be able to extend out because it's attached to the fabric and the motor is acting as a brake. Now some people when they're doing this might just use a bungee strap to connect the top of the arm to the RV so that it doesn't extend out. But I've just gotten the habit of using zip ties through the arms right here, but the manufacturer decided to add some silicone. So let me get some of that out of the way. So I'll just take a zip tie. I'm just gonna push it through right there. It's obviously easiest to do in the valley of the metal right there, rather than on the top where it's gonna make good contact against the arm. All we have to do is put the other end on So I would just trust one set of zip ties, so I'll add like three more sets or two more sets, right? Now, while I might agree with you that this looks a little bit questionable as far as the effectiveness of it, what I can tell you is this. When the awning manufacturer ships these arms, they just have a couple zip ties around them too. It's a little bit like an alligator. Uh, it's hard to collapse it, but it's, it's kind of like an alligator's mouth. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to keep it closed. I hope that makes sense. We don't have to fight a lot of pressure keeping it from opening. We just don't want to let it open. Now, even though we aren't taking the other side off, there's a little trick you can do on this side too. Is you can just put a little bar clamp on the fabric 
against the tube and now the fabric can't unroll either so the tube can't unroll so if you are going to take both sides off that's another way you can do that so then the next step is just going to be to unbolt this torsion right here now there is probably still tension on this i'm going to assume that's just a 7 16 bolt so there's still tension on this until i pop this thing up and then that's an explosive force where you can damage your hand if you have it in the wrong place. All I'm really going to do is lift the whole tube up out of the arm right there. Carefully open that up and then because that arm is zip tight in place it's not going to extend out and hit me and uh, you can see we had tension on there and if your hand was in the way you would have had some damage from it. So setup is the key to do with this job safely. We don't have to drill out the rivets because, well, they're already broken off of there. So we'll have to put them back in. There's the broken torsion. We have a little bit of an added difficulty in that the uh, tube got smashed a little bit, so it's going to be hard to put that cast cap back on with a deformed tube, so I do have to straighten this out a little bit. So let me get it set up. There's a big divot and dent in the arm right, or in the tube right there where they hit something. This theoretically should be getting a new tube. You can even see another dent right over there where they hit something. But the owner just asked me to do a budget repair. So I'm just gonna have to straighten this out a little bit so the torsion actually fits on there. So cut me a little bit of slack if when I straighten it up, it doesn't look brand new. I guess I still do have one rivet in there I need to get out. Nailed it. I'm amazed I still haven't lost this pair yet. Now because I have my clamp here, I might as well just try to use it to squeeze it and straighten it all out. Let's see what we do. Eh, we're looking pretty good. That's pretty round. I think we're good at that. I'll put my clamp back on the tube right there to keep it from failing in case the motor fails. Now we just have to put this back on. Now we have the fabric uh, insert on that rail or, and that one right there so this is where the awning strap is supposed to go even though this is a power awning they still do want that slot to be accessible for different uh accessories to put in like light strips uh tie downs or even of course additional awning or additional fabrics like screen fabrics so we want to make sure that slot right there on the cap lands right there on that slot now we just need to rivet it. I'm just going to use some pretty standard 3 16 blind rivets. These are probably half inch long. I don't need that many, but you never know how many I'll drop. And of course my power rivet gun, if you have one. If you don't have one, and you do a lot of rivets, I recommend one. Right, so I got one rivet loaded in there. Have a hole right there in the tube. So much easier. All right, so this awning is about 16 feet. So we're gonna add about eight winds to this torsion in the uh, up or closed position. So we'll need to go to my special tools and get my locking oil filter pliers. Now this is the most dangerous part of doing this job. Now the other stuff was kind of dangerous, but this is the most dangerous because we're gonna add tension to this. On this end cap right here in this uh, torsion, there's a couple grooves. They're gonna fit in the uh, profile of this extrusion of the arm. So it's usually best to kind of just put it into place first and slide it down. That way when we put our locking pliers on, the pliers won't be in the way of the arm when we try to slide it down, which is dangerous when the, there's tension on there. Because this is the part that wants to swing around and hit you. All right, so what we're going to do is add tension to the uh, torsion here. We're going to do about eight turns and we're going to go away from the top of the coach. That's how I remember it. So not counterclockwise, not clockwise because Depends on what side you're on, that doesn't make any sense. So I just say away from the top. What we're gonna do is lift this up. One, two, three, four, eight. Now we can just slide it into place. 
Okay, she has to put the uh, bolt back on. And it's like that, it's done. I mean, don't forget to take your clamps off. Cut your zip ties free. Oh. Get your ladder out of the way. Let's go ahead and roll it up first. Very nice. Very nice. Go ahead and extend it out. Now if we do roll it up the wrong way, we actually want to uh, extend very easily and very difficult to uh, roll up because that little motor, as in the tube right there, is not strong enough to add tension to the uh, torsion on that side. I think now you can appreciate the big dent that's in that tube. That's why we did a budget repair on this one. It's all I was asked to do, and we're just trying to help. Let's go ahead and retract the awning. And of course, for whatever reason, these uh, power awnings, none of them in the heat like to work as far as rolling up or multiple extensions and retractions. It's almost like the little motors just aren't quite strong enough. Now, of course, the owner is aware because of the bent tube. I'm going to torque the uh, awning tube itself away from the trailer. So this little gap right there, there's really not too much I can do about it without putting a new tube on. So ideally, you just put a strap on the bottom, like a lot of owners are prone to do anyways as a backup travel strap, just Velcro. But believe it or not, we actually did it. I said that we would try to make a quick, short little video about an RV repair, and we did. Didn't have to do anything extravagant or difficult. So that was replacing the rear torsion on a Dometic power awning on this 2017 Puma travel trailer. It's nice when it's easy. Bye. All right, I forgot one thing. Put some clear silicone on. The factory shouldn't have sealed the arm right there. But if I leave a gap right there, that's a place for water to get in. So I have to seal it back up. A little bit. But there it is deployed now. Now this is going to be heading out into the desert and any shade you can cast on an RV is absolutely vital for the livability of the desert during the summer. The motor is on that side, the power runs through the arm on this side. You can see it goes down through here all the way into the sidewall right there. Yeah, I bet they'll be happy to have a functioning awning when they're going to be living in this for the next few months. All right, now we're done. Thanks, guys. Bye. Don't forget the arms have built-in gas struts that are pretty strong, uh, that have a lot of, that are very, very strong and can extend, and want to extend. Now, 